without saying that most people don't spend their time watching a movie with the intention of learning truth or getting filled in on what's going on in the world. In fact, quite the opposite. They're willing to give up a couple hours of their lives to be entertained, to escape from reality. But for the most part, the opposite is true when people sit down in front of the major news stations. They want to find out what's really going on in the world. They want that news anchor to give them the lowdown on what's happening in sports, what's going on with the weather, and more importantly, what's happening politically that will affect their lives and the lives of people around them. The sad part is they get what they're after when they sit down to watch a movie because they're not expecting truth from Hollywood but they are expecting truth from mainstream media news networks. The question is, why? Why are you expecting these corporate shills to tell you the truth? Would anyone draw a pan of liquid from the sewer and expect clean, fresh, thirst-quenching water? Then why, after being lied to time and time again by fake stream media, would we continue to watch corporate actors expecting to be enlightened by some nugget of truth or wisdom? If we haven't learned by now that the major networks are in league with government psychopaths, even to the extent of priming people with pro-war propaganda, which straps unborn human beings with transgenerational debt and costs the lives of untold numbers of soldiers and civilians, if we haven't learned that by now, there's little hope for us. Now, having said that, sometimes truth makes a brief appearance on the set of media outlets. And when that happens, it's very obvious. Enjoy this breath of fresh air and share it with those who may still have their heads in the sand regarding these simple truths. I, I'm not a military man here, but if the North Koreans were to start any kind of military offensive against one of its neighbors, it would, that country would probably be incinerated in a matter of hours. They're not going there, but you, if you read Western media, it looks like we're dealing with a lunatic state, just as James pointed out. Go ahead, Ken. Well, I, I really believe this is more smoke and mirrors than anything else. I think the timing couldn't be more uh, obvious. This uh, recent false flag event in Syria and Trump's absolute U-turn and ridiculousness, insulting the American people and the world with his beautiful babies and concern for uh, the Syrians is nothing more than a complete total continuity with the policy of the United States yeah. over the last few decades and that would be to completely destroy the Middle East. Now when Trump did this so many of his constituents, those who supported him and got him into office were outraged. They voted for him in direct opposition to Hillary Clinton because they knew that World War III was a virtual absolute with her, that psychopath extraordinaire criminal with a husband who likes to fly off with Jeffrey Epstein to on the Lolita Express to go do God knows what while he dismisses his secret service heading to the US Virgin Islands. So this, uh, this, this thing that's happening with North Korea I believe is nothing more than smoke and mirrors to divert from the real policies which are going to be continued because Donald Trump is owned by the very same interests that own the US Congress and the policies are to continue to destroy the Middle East. I do believe that they're going to head into Syria and go ahead and bring in U.S. troops. And a lot of those U.S. troops who saw what happened with Syria in the last couple of weeks came out and made some amazing YouTube videos and said, what the hell are you doing to Donald Trump? So for me, and, and aside from that, the United States never fights anybody who can fight back. We're cowards. We don't pick on people who can fight back. If Iraq taught the world anything, it is, and Libya for that matter, giving up its nuclear program, uh, the world has been taught, if you want to avoid the empire's wrath, make sure you arm yourself to the teeth, because disarming yourself is not going to serve any protection at all. Let's also get in, here's where North Korea and Syria and the Middle East, all of it ties in. There is a very big misunderstanding amongst the people of the world who don't have psychopathic, sociopathic uh, qualities. See, for those of us who have any level of humanity, we don't want war. But there's a big problem. Those who are in charge actually have a major incentive to have war. Now, the bankers who run the world, literally by having an infinite supply of money, while us dupes allow ourselves to pay interest, <laughs> interest when we can print that money ourselves and let's get the JFK, 
who is going to end that by issuing United States notes as opposed to Federal Reserve notes, Ken, Ken, which of course is a private here. bank. Ken, let me jump in here. We're going to go to a short break, and after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on North Korea. Okay, let me go back to Ken here. Two things about cross stuff that people complain about. I have to go to a hard break in the middle, and it's too short, so I cut you off in the first half. Please continue, my friend. What I'm going to say now, I want to make clear, is motivated by a deep love of this beautiful planet and all humanity. And while many of my brothers and sisters in the human family are acting, acting in a completely unacceptable way, what I'm saying is based on love. There is no grudge. I simply want what's best so that we can hand this world over in a better state than we have it now. We are continuing to flirt with a third world war. It seemed that people in World War II realized, especially with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that we could not do this a third time. But apparently we've been cast under another spell and seem to forget that we do have the capacity to destroy this planet. Now, those of us who have any kind of sanity and humanity realize the dangers of this, but those who are running the world through the control of finance have a major incentive to incite war because more important than the money that they control is the most important parameter of a tyrannical system, a tiny minority ruling over the masses. And that principle is you will never be able to rule people if you cannot divide them. So you must divide them. What divides people more than anything else? War, mass murder, horrendous crimes, torture. Things like that are good in the view of a banker. So the bankers have a major incentive just as a carte blanche reality of where they are. But right now they have an extra added incentive and that incentive is that the consciousness of humanity is rising and many of the key principles of the ty tyrannical system we're dealing with are being exposed. And there's an elephant in the room that I'm gonna get into after the other guests talk because it's an important elephant that we seem to be ignoring. But the major point that I wanna make right now is that those who are in charge of this world have a major incentive to instigate a third world war. And this is where, it, I would disagree with my brother Mohammed there in, in Russia, if you think that logic and rational behavior and sense is the guide, because attacking North Korea would be catastrophic, of course. And I used to live in Hawaii. Hawaii may well be incinerated, sure. literally. Sure. Hawaii would be a primary target, and I love my Hawaiian brothers and sisters, and I'll be damned if I'm gonna sit by and say nothing that is relevant to that situation because I'm afraid of the consequences. So I'm gonna get back to the elephant in the room after okay. the other guests have a chance to talk, but make no mistake, those who are running this world right now have a major incentive for a third world war. Another place we can go to is Iran, which I'm heading back to again. There's 100,000 victims in Iran from the chemical weapons that Saddam Hussein used with the aid of the CIA. This is a matter of public record. Let, yep. let us remember how he was our favorite little attack dog in the Middle East and that we had to attack Iran for having the audacity of getting rid of our puppet, the Shah. And the Iranians, all too ironically, while being told, the whole West being told that these are the evil people who want to exterminate the Jews and all this kind of nonsense, the Iranians had an amazing debate within their nation uh, back in the 80s when they were being attacked by weapons of mass destruction from Saddam Hussein and chemical weapons and there was a debate about whether they should even attack uh, Basra and Baghdad with weapons of mass destruction and you know what their answer was? No, we can't because we're a God-fearing nation and it would be immoral and God would not approve. So this is yet another example, 100,000 victims of chemical weapons in Iran. So yeah, America's moral authority hasn't existed for decades and I have been shocked that even back in 2003 that people were talking about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? Excuse me, the United States is the biggest producer, distributor, and user of weapons of mass destruction, and it's gonna be the moral authority to talk about who can and can't have them? It was absurd then, it's even more absurd now. $60 billion weapons to Saudi Arabia, the most grotesque nation on the planet. Women have zero rights, again I say, how is it possible that the United States can talk about its concern for women and selling $60 billion worth of weapons to Saudi Arabia in which women aren't even considered humans, quite frankly. And now, They're not allowed to go out alone. They can't drive. They the can't Saudis have been elected to the UN Commission for Women's Rights.